Hello and welcome to episode number 12 of my Ask the Expert series of podcasts and interviews and YouTube videos. So today I've got the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Andy Downs. Now, Andy was one of my first personal training clients when I was working at Virgin and we hadn't spoken for years. And then all of a sudden I saw this guy pop up on my Instagram with some really inspirational, really thoughtful things now as a life coach. And that turned out to be Andy. So it'd be really interesting to find out about his journey and um, see where he's come from and see what he's got to say. So grab yourself a drink. Get yourself nice and comfy and see you on the other side. Hello and welcome, guys. Well, I am sat and I've got the pleasure of speaking with Andy. Um, how are you today, mate? Very good, thank you. Good. And please, let's just dive straight in. Tell us a bit about yourself, man. Okay, so my name's Andy Downs. Um, I'm a uh, accredited life coach. Uh, and I also like to call myself a manifestation uh, mentor, which I'm sure I'll get into what that exactly means. Uh, mm. So yeah, I've been doing life coaching for a number of years now, and I got into life coaching because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. So I thought I would help other people try and figure out what they wanted to do with their lives. Um, and by default, that has now become my sort of purpose and, and passion in life is helping other people manifest the life of their dreams. I like that. So actually, in searching of your unsurety, it helps that you were able to then give it to other people. And then actually, you found what you found as a byproduct, your, yeah. uh, your direction. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was, my background is, I studied film and TV at uni, um, got into various film and TV jobs, and also worked in the music industry, which sounds really exciting. And I'm not just saying it, <laughs> it was exciting. Um, but also, I... I just wasn't really being very fulfilled in, in the in the career choices that I'd made. So I started reading lots of self-help books, self-development books, um, and really found a passion with self-development, really. And then a number of years after discovering self-development world, that's when I decided and had a little bit of a light bulb moment of, okay, let's get into, let's get into coaching. Fantastic. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm fairly new to coaching itself as a, as an industry and as a career for myself after, as well as personal training. So you've got a little bit more experience in that. So how did you, when you say accredited, what does what does that mean then for anyone that's wondering? Um, so it just basically means that I've done, I, I've got a diploma in, in life coaching that's been accredited by certain bodies. Yeah. Um, what's great about the life coaching world is, is that you don't have to be accredited. It's not like mm -hmm. counseling or therapy or those, those other um, help services um, it's not regulated so you don't have to have an official qualification to be a life coach anyone can be um, a life coach uh, but for me and just to to grow my confidence it was I, I wanted to do some formal formal training more for more for me uh, really so that's that's the accredited accredited bit ah uh, yeah so like like you I did a, a diploma as well and actually for me and, and maybe you agree it just gives you that footing of that little bit of structure that little bit of idea behind the structure of of what coaching is some of the some of the initial things you might encounter when working with someone but then also it allows you because there isn't that that noose of regulation it allows you that freedom to be able to really make it what you're good at i suppose what you're passionate about yeah definitely and like you say it gives it does give you that structure and it gives you certain tools that you can use um cause, you know there are there are some quite key skills that you need as, as coach and the training that I did um really gave me those skills and gave me like a toolbox of things to use um with my with my clients so yeah it was, it was a confidence thing for me but also just to just to learn techniques and strategies to use in coaching sessions that's amazing how would I've got an interesting question for you now um and just so anyone knows none of this is prepared so I might just throw some questions like so what is it how do you explain to somebody what a coach is Oh gosh. Because <laughs> sometimes I find it's met with well, what is a coach? Yeah. I mean, quite often people are really interested in what coaching is, but quite also quite often people don't understand what coaching is. Mm. Uh, and I still haven't figured out the go to answer to use. Um, I quite often, and you're like this, but I quite often <laughs> say that it's similar to a personal trainer in a gym, mm -hmm. but for the stuff that's going on inside, inside your head, not necessarily stuff to do with with your body yes so that's one way of describing it um i like that yeah but but also you know personal training isn't just about the body personal training is also about the mind equally life coaching is about the mind it can also be about the body so 
there is crossover, but sometimes that's the easy way of describing it. Um, life coaching is, it, it can cover all, a manner of different, different mm. things. People think that it's to do with business and sometimes it is to do with business. And sometimes it's to do with things that aren't related to your career and it's just related to your purpose in life and your direction in life. So it, it's, it, it's got a very broad spectrum in terms of the type of things that it, that it covers. And I guess the important thing to say is that life coaching is just, it, it's client led. So if the client wants to talk about their career goals and aspirations, then they can use the life coach for that. But if they want to talk about the deeper stuff in life and things outside of their career, then they can also hire a life coach to talk about those things. So it's just all about getting clarity in a particular area in your life. Um, it's creating direction in your life. Mm purpose and the reason that you get up in the morning uh, that's a key thing that we do in in, in coaching uh, and also accountability as well um, creating goals creating actions and then using your coach to hold you accountable to those to those things uh, so so common isn't it for us to come up with goals and things that we want to do in our lives and before you know it a couple of years have passed and we've not done anything yeah the goal or dream so it's really handy to hire a life coach to hold you accountable to those things that we really, really want to do. Yeah, so you only have to look at um, New Year's resolutions and the idea of them um, or starting a new diet or a fitness regime or whatever it may be. Um, and I think it also depends on... I do a lot of work looking at um, the four tendencies, which is the kind of person you are. And I know that I fall under the category of obliger, which means that I struggle to set my own accountability, which is why I need a coach in my life because I'm affected. I prioritize naturally external stimuli, priorities, tasks. Um, so if you asked me to do something and I had to do something for myself, I'd prioritize yours. And that's a natural thing. That's fine. But once you realize that, it's then getting the accountability because there's always that person or that friend that hits all the goals and, and they're really successful. And you can be sat there sometimes going, well, why can't I? And actually, it's not programmed. I don't think it's programmed within us all to be able to do the, the same way. We've all got different ways of learning, different ways of motivation. Yeah, definitely. I think you've just you've just picked up on a really good point there. Is in that a lot of coaches have also got coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, some some people assume that because I'm a life coach, then I do, I don't need a life coach. But actually, I have got various coaches in my life that hold me accountable to my goals and help me to find clarity in my direction in life. Yeah. Uh, and it's always recommended from really, really successful coaches that coaches should work with coaches them, themselves. Um, it's almost like practicing what we preach as well. We yeah. we're other people to get coaches. And so it's really important for us to, to work with coaches as well. I think it's that it, it's the, the want to consistently, well, I suppose, and, and progressively learn and expand our own knowledge. Cause we've just been talking before we started filming about them, all them books behind you. Um, and, you know, I'm not a massive reader, but I love listening to audiobooks um, because everyone, again, is different and everyone has a different way of learning. And we, it, too often we get stuck in, well, it's either that way or no way. You know, if you can't do it that way, things like at school, you read from textbooks. Mm -hmm. um, but if actually I'd have had access, for example, in school to being able to listen to my lessons, I might have been able to apply myself a little bit more. Who knows? Um, but obviously there are restrictions there. I just wanted to swing back to the coach, actually, when I said the definition of coach, because it is always a massive struggle. And what I find is when you say life coach, there can almost be a little bit of a hesitation. And the life coaches that you see on TV, the life coaches that are almost celebrities, yeah. almost get a little bit of a, for want of other words, it's a little bit airy-fairy and a little bit, a little bit... You, you, yeah, I don't really know what the word is or the sound is, but that's the only thing that came out. But it's a little bit, well, well that's what helping someone to live like. And there is that real misunderstanding. And the way, the only way that I found out that I could explain it to people is when you look at athletes. So an athlete has a coach to get better at what they do, to be accountable for taking the steps they need to do to get where they need to. And a, that coach is only there. Their only concern is that athlete. So... When you, when you look at friends and when you look at close family and you think of the people that you're closest to and the people that you share stuff, they have their own things going on. 
but with a coach in a professional capacity, their only concern at that time is your success or your progression or helping you. Um, so it really is that kind of next level of support, isn't it? And that really, because it was important that when people ask that the the definition settles and actually it's easy for me to be able to explain and explore things like a PT for the mind went exactly the same way you did. But then the, the word coach just came up and I thought, well, hang on a minute, because sometimes a PT fixes things. So a coach's role isn't necessarily to fix things. Mm. It's to take what you've got and then help you get forward or jump hurdles. It could be a hurdle coach. You know, we, there's literal things we could put in there. Um, because really we are, as coaches, your biggest fan, mm. you know, as well. Um, the person at the at the corner of a boxing ring holding your towel. That's, mm. that's you know, in terms of obviously the sporting references, and it's not going to work for everybody, but I think it's quite an easy way to, to see that because I think coaching and sometimes counselling get a little bit mixed up or therapy get a little bit mixed up. And there are always elements of, been able to identify things and helping somebody see how they can reframe things, you know, especially traumatic things or, or negative things in the past. But it really is about, it's that success, isn't it? It's that light, like you said before, like light bulb moments. It's helping someone get to that point where they go, oh yeah. yeah. Right, and then go away. And then the next time you speak to them, they've applied it. And then, yeah. you know, things are, things are suddenly changing. Um, As a coach, that's an amazing experience. Mm -hmm witness those light bulb moments from from clients um and you've picked up on well you've picked up on loads of good points there but another <laughs> thing, thank you we're not there to tell you what to do and we're not there to give you advice or recommendations and there's a number of reasons for that but the number one reason is is that we want to empower the clients mm. for their own life and i strongly believe that every single person out there has got the answers to their problems their challenges in inside them already and it's a coach's job to shine a light on those solutions that you've already got inside of yourself so if people want me to give them advice or recommendations i just always turn it back to them and say you know what what advice and recommendations would you be giving to me if i was coming to you with the challenges mm -hmm. yeah. um and nine times out of ten they give me a solution so then i turn it back around to them and say okay apply that solution to your own your own life so it's a really empowering experience for the client to realize that i am capable i have got all the answers i am resilient i'm strong enough to progress through life and achieve the things that i really want to achieve in life yeah especially as you gave a great example so your journey was you got into coaching by not knowing what your direction was so it's almost like saying that actually sometimes we struggle to see the wood for the trees ourselves but when you take someone in a almost a third party, neut more neutral place um, to look in and uh, from a non-judgmental way as well, which is a big part of it, I think, and a big power of it. That actually, the, like you said, the answers are there. So I remember, you know, when you were a child and, and you get told, well, how would you feel if I said that to you? Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're made to think about how things come across and, and how words can hurt and how actions can can come across and it really is just a real life and uh, i suppose slightly more a deeper more mature realization of that really isn't it because there's things that we would do to help others there's things that we would say so for example someone's feeling particularly down having a difficult day mm -hmm. and you say you, it, sometimes it can just take as you've quite rightly said if your friend was down and having a difficult day what would you say to them mm -hmm. And because it's not ourself, we're not saying it to ourself, that can be as little as it, you know, as needs to be to, to make a real difference for someone. And yeah. We're sometimes our own worst enemies. We mm -hmm. self-sabotage and we can sometimes work against ourselves. So sometimes it takes a little bit of a coach to bounce these ideas off each other, um, get those reflections sent back to us. Uh, and hearing someone else reflect back our challenges our limiting beliefs our confusion um could, that can be a very powerful experience as well yeah and I, the, the one thing well there's a lot of things i love about the kind of coaching arena but not only when somebody has a light bulb moment but when you 
realize something. So not yeah. only sometimes you realize a strength or realize something that you'd that you know that, that came out that you didn't know was there because you just get into the flow of things. But also the fact that you don't stop learning, it's not a finite thing. It's not a set, you know, curriculum of things that you that you need to learn. There's so many books out there. There's, you know, books from great leaders, great philosophers, there's all sorts. And but it, you know, it really is exactly what you make it. I wanted to just I say just, I say just a lot, I don't know why. But I want to come back to what is, and I've got an idea, but I've got no qualms about thinking the people that are watching do not know what a manifestation mentor is. Uh, Come on. I don't know what a manifestation mentor is. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Okay, where do we start? So there's two words there, isn't there? So I just want to kind of dissect the two words. Really. So manifestation, the world of manifestation is manifesting our dreams, our goals, our dream lives basically so the word manifestation is bringing things into reality mm -hmm. so it's having an idea it's having a vision and then manifesting those things into to our lives so that they become tangible we can see them we can touch them and they're part of reality so that's the manifesting part the mentor part and it kind of relates to some of the stuff that we've just been talking about in terms of coaching but what is different with a mentor and a coach is that a mentor sometimes does give you recommendations and sometimes does give you guidance and an idea of where and how to get somewhere. Okay. And the reason that you might call yourself a mentor is that you've got experience of, of doing what your clients want to do. So the yeah. reason that I call myself a manifestation mentor is because I've been studying manifestation for over 10 years now. And so, and I've been applying it to my life for many years as well. So I've got kind of that experience and that expertise to allow me to make recommendations in other people's um, lives in relation to manifestation. So that's why I call myself a manifestation mentor. And the, the, the program and the packages that I offer are very, very different to my life coaching packages. Right. So life coaching packages are very much, as I was saying earlier, client led. Um, it's all down to the it's all down to the client. I'm led by the client. Whereas my manifestation mentor packages are more structured. I've got an approach that I apply to the program. I kind of guide the client. So it's kind of like the other way. It's the other way around, really. That's really interesting. Um, I think I first I first heard of manifestation from I'm pretty sure it was listening to the secret. Mm. That's usually that's usually the, the doorway into the manifestation world for a lot of people. Mm. And it, well, in that case, it's not a real secret, then, is it? <laughs> the book, it's not a secret at all. <laughs> no, and it's you know, and and I remember being so skeptical the first time I read it, and I don't know whether it was because again it was on audio books, so I think some of the ways it was presented was quite what came across as quite cheesy, and so there was some quite bold claims being. Um, you know, being made. But what I found was, like with anything that you read, if you take it and you take the bits that resonate with you, what I found was that actually things like, so I was working in an office at the time, so this is what, maybe 10 years ago? And I remember I was, the, I was managing a sales team at that point and some of the things that some of the actions I was doing, especially in times when we were chasing targets and we were doing all this, were actually being detrimental towards it. So some of my, some of, I suppose some of my doubt and some of my negativity weren't, were then blocking the success and the sales being manifested. And I didn't quite understand it because I'm like, well, they're not a tangible thing. I'm very much a scientific person or I was a few years ago. And I went, well, if I can't see it, like I can see this mouse, so I know it exists. Mm. But actually, when I started thinking about some of the things that I think, again, trying to explain it for me is, isn't, isn't great. And I'm sure you're going to come in with a really clinical, really precise kind of reconstruction of what I'm saying. But if you are, you need to be open to what you want for it to be able to appear and if you don't 
believe you're going to get it, then you're not going to get it. And it's a, the, the law, of, we're talking about law of attraction, you know, because I don't yeah. think we've heard it yet. But yeah, the, the secret is based on the law of attraction. And, you know, the, the law of attraction is a self fulfilling prophecy. So if, if there's people out there that don't believe in the law of attraction, then the law of attraction or the universe will deliver experiences and situations that confirm to you that law of attraction doesn't mm -hmm. um, exist. But then by default underneath all of that, that is proving that the law of attraction does exist. So yes, of course, uh, yeah. it's a, it is a self um, fulfilling um, prophecy and it, it is quite hard hard to explain because you because you can't see it i totally get i totally get it. <laughs> um and i'm i'm quite a scientific i quite like scientific explanations as well i like to understand things i like to yeah. see things i like to see formulas okay if you do this and you do that then that equals this so the law of attraction can be a struggle if you have got quite a scientific uh, methodical yeah. way um but I really like the scientific aspect of the law of attraction. So the scientific aspect of the law of attraction is all to do with energy. So everything in the universe is made up of energy. The table that I'm using today, the chair that I'm sat on, me, you, everything is made up of energy. <clears throat> and everything is vibrating at a certain frequency. So a table or a solid item will be vibrating at a very different frequency to the wind for example mm. um which you know wind is wind is energy um, as well and depending on how high or low something is vibrating that determines what that is attracted to so high energy frequency high energy frequency levels are attracted to other energies that are vibrating at a similar similar frequency and when you start to understand that you then take it to another level and you start to think of the things that we can't see, i.e. emotions. Mm -hmm. And then you start to think of those in terms of energy as well. And so that's when the law of attraction starts to get interesting because you then realize that when we're feeling down in the dumps or we're vibrating at a low energy frequency, which are the emotions that we would attach to words like sadness, yep. lethargy, you know, all of those low energy frequencies that is determining how our body is is vibrating and that then influences what we're attracting into into our lives whereas the really good um feelings they're high they're vibrating at high energy frequency and so we're more likely to attract high energy frequency situations back into our lives so that's kind of the energy that really sort of condensed down into a, a, a <laughs> um explanation but once you can start to get your head around that, you can really start to understand how we do attract things into our lives. And when I come across people that don't necessarily understand the law of attraction or don't agree with the law of attraction, I ask them to think of someone in their lives that is always thinking negatively and feeling negatively. And are they have they have they attracted positive things into their lives? And 99% of the time or 100% of the time it's no you know if you can think of someone that thinks negatively all the time feels negatively all the time yeah. but has got a really positive happy life then they don't go hand in hand do they no they don't <laughs> um it'd be now, interesting to meet someone if that existed <laughs> now the other the, the flip side of that is okay well you think of someone that thinks really positively and in, encourages themselves to feel positively as much as, as much of the time as possible do they have a hundred percent positive life now they will generally have a really positive life but they will they will still come across negativity in their life they'll still come across challenges they'll still perhaps have limiting beliefs mm. they might have things happen in their lives that don't make them feel good now this brings me on to one of the massive misconceptions of the law of attraction and one of my problems with the secret actually which is it doesn't explain this to to people it doesn't explain that we are human and that we are going to come across negative situations we are going to experience negative emotions but that's okay and there are strategies and things in place that you can successfully manage those situations and emotions 
and still apply the law of attraction um, to your life. Now, I I read The Secret over 10 years ago, got hooked on the law of attraction and started applying it to my life, started manifesting some great things into my life, but then still felt really unhappy and not satisfied, basically. Yeah. And it took a mental breakdown last year, actually, start of last year, for me to really question the law of attraction and for me to really challenge my own views on it and what I came to the conclusion is is that I was avoiding all negativity I was avoiding negative situations I was avoiding negative emotions mm. almost aside because I was scared to experience them because I thought if I associate myself with this negative emotion I'm going to attract more negative emotions and situations back into my life yeah. and what I've realized is that's not possible because we're human beings so what I'm trying to say is that it's great that the secret is out there and it's introducing people to law of attraction, but there's so much more to law of attraction, I think, there is than, than, than the works of the secret, for example. Um, and that's what encouraged me to set up my, you know, my manifestation program, really, is to try and teach people that the law of attraction does exist, but also we're human and we have to navigate those negative emotions and situations at the same time. Absolutely. I think because there's um, a very simple way that I like to, that I found again, resonated like a little story just to try and understand because there's a lot about a lot of these things is for me about perception and the way that we perceive events and how we deal with them. Um, and I would ask anyone to imagine you've got a Monday and a Tuesday. So you've got two days, you're doing exactly the same car journey and one journey to work um, you're stressed and the other journey to work, you're happy. So you have your music on or whatever you're driving to work, you do the same journey and the stress day, you're almost guaranteed to see bad drivers, red lights. Um, the red lights will feel like they're lasting forever. Um, and you know, you'll feel like you're rushing and you know, you'll run into the office and you'll, you'll do whatever you'll throw stuff down and you'll have a really probably quite a negative start to the day. Whereas if you're in a more positive mood, the likelihood is not that you're going to see the green lights, but you're not going to notice the reds. Yeah. So the way lights are programmed most of the time is they will just go off on timers. So the likelihood is you will come across the same amount of traffic lights, the same amount of red lights and green lights each day. But your perceptions change. So rather than getting stressed out in that little bit of traffic, you probably just turn your music up a little bit. You might have a sing song, you might do whatever. And you get into work and it's not that you're any earlier, but you're just in a much better, calmer position. And actually you're more effective. I would say you're more efficient and more effective when you're, being, when you're in a more positive mindset anyway. But that for me was quite astounding really because I then saw it happen. So when I was on journeys in cars and I was, if I found myself getting stressed, I put two and two together. You know, if I found myself getting irritated by a bit of traffic, and then I started saying, okay, well, I'm just going to give myself enough time to get somewhere and I'm just not going to worry about it. And actually, I was never late. The journey took me the same amount of time. I enjoyed the journey. And I think sometimes it's, there's, sometimes I struggle, not necessarily with manifestation, but somebody said, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was Ken Honda when I was reading Happy Money. Fantastic book. I'm pretty sure it's, so when it comes to wealth and when it comes to money, because that's been a lot of my learnings over the last couple of years, and money's like water. It's everywhere. Um, but it's seeing the opportunities to be able to earn it. Yeah. Whereas if you are in a closed negative mindset, the opportunities are staring you in the face sometimes. Sometimes they take a little bit of looking, a little bit of lateral thinking, but you don't see them. So when you see people that are negative and they tend to be the same kind of people that are ill, so people that are ill quite a lot, um, and there's a, there's a certain thought process that actually the stress and the immune system response from negativity can actually lead you to be physically ill. So I think there's some scientific stuff in there as well. Um, but it just, it just amazes me that we can do, we can affect ourselves so much by being negative it's not like you said quite rightly it's not that we have to avoid negativity but it's our perception of that and what we then do with that yeah. and it's almost it's almost 
welcoming all of the colors of life in, in into our world you know it's it's recognizing that it is human to feel sad it is it is human to feel threatened sometimes or intimidated by situations you know and but but it's not letting those those feelings fester it's it's allowing them to be there and then allowing them to to flow through 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 us and through our through our lives you know and not not hanging on to those negative negative feelings so you're right it's not it's not about avoiding them because that's just not possible and like i said that's what i was doing mm. work you know um but also the, the the naysayers that i come across the naysayers of law of attraction that i come across i always just say to them look one of the simplest ways of describing what the law of attraction is asking of us is to feel feel good as much of the time as possible mm. what's like feeling good is good right so why would you not want to encourage yourself to feel and think positively as much of the time as possible and um, that's all that law of attraction is asking of us is to, to feel good as much of the time as possible which can never be a bad thing right exactly, exactly. provided that we aren't suppressing those negative emotions and feelings that need to be processed you know yeah because otherwise then you're falsifying being positive all the time because you're not and you end up like you said you end up suppressing something which always winds up being a bad thing to do because it will end up coming out but it may well come out in a in a way that's a little bit more severe than perhaps it could have done if it was explored um yeah. i mean this stuff i think i think we well we've spoken before on this and this stuff we could speak about for for hours and hours because it is so interesting and the the human brain's so powerful and even when we look back to things like the fight or flight response you know um we look at the prehistoric brain or we look at tribes and and how they work and the basic human needs of feeling loved um respected and safe yeah. um yeah. and if one of them are out of sync mm -hmm. then that can cause you know that can cause confrontation it can cause sadness it can you know um and just just on that actually is because of those three needs, especially the, the security and the safety aspect, our brain is designed to look for danger and look for threat. So our brains have got what scientists call a negative bias. So we are born with the, the, the wiring of our brain to look for negative situations um, to protect us, to keep us alive. So our brain is designed to help us to survive. So without us realizing it's always looking for danger, it's looking for threat, it's looking for anything that might cause us harm, cause us upset. And so it's very hard to try and rewire your brain to not let that negative bias manage us throughout our lives. Because if we do let the negative bias control us, mm. we won't push ourselves out of our comfort zone. We won't go after dreams and goals that might at first feel a little bit scary. And before you know it, we've become stagnant. We've just we're just doing the same thing every day because that's what our brain our brain likes us to do the same thing over and over again because it feels safe and it feels secure. And also, our brain wants us to be efficient, so it does create habits. It creates programs in our minds to be like, okay, this has happened, so then you do this. Really hard to break that that cycle and to reprogram our brains, uh, and it takes it takes time and it takes conscious effort to you know to do that it does and in some ways it because that need and that negative bias was initially to protect us from predators and now we're in a position where we don't have the predators but the need for that response is still there it's almost as if the brain can magnify the smallest things to make mountains out of molehills yeah, yeah. i don't love that expression because it is so, so sometimes there's days where you um, and I was listening to Tony Robbins this morning. Um, another great one. It was the um, the Power Within. So it was his live seminar that he did, which I love listening to. Mm. And it talks about being in certain states, um, certain states of mind. Mm. Um, and sometimes there's days where you're absolutely fine, and one minute event can then just completely flip you on, flip the day on its head. And for some reason, and you can't always explain why you suddenly start feeling a bit you know more negative because your brain's had that response to whatever it was and it could be you know it could be somebody else being negative so it could be somebody 
putting your positivity, you know, at risk. Um, that could sometimes knock you off as loads of different things. But it's one of the one of the biggest and hardest parts, I think, for me and some of the people that I work with. And you know, please tell me if you if you find the same. But it's it's actually the process of learning to identify and be okay with some of these reactions to then work out what you're going to do with them so that they can best serve you. Yeah. And that's what, that's one of the key learn, learnings that I've had from just studying the law of attraction and manifestation is that it's very empowering. It, it makes you realize that you have got a choice. Yeah. So, you know, some of those examples that you've given, like the red light one, for example, you know, you've got a choice about how you react to that situation. You can either get frustrated or you can almost laugh it off. And, you know, I have those days where things just keep going wrong for me. You know, I might drop something in the morning. My computer freezes in the afternoon and I can feel myself getting more and more frustrated. Yeah. And bringing awareness to it, and that's a great word, awareness, um, makes me, makes me realise, hang on, who's, it, who's in control here? Is, is it my ego? Is it my mind getting frustrated because my mind wants to do everything efficient? Mm brain is getting frustrated or am i you know the whole of me in control and when the whole of me is in control i.e the mind the body and the soul that's when i can then look at things with a in a light-hearted approach and actually just find it funny i just find it funny now that if loads of things are going wrong i just like oh, okay it's just one of those days and just find it humorous and yeah. when i decide to have that reaction versus frustration that's when then I'm, I'm in control of, of my life. Yeah. And do you know, my, one of my friends and, and coaches, and I suppose in a mentor position now, um, and I did, I did a post on my social media a few weeks ago was about, he explained to me his idea of the frustration equation um, mm -hmm. and frustration equaling. And this is where the maths and the scientist part of my brain went, way. I like stuff like this. And it was frustration equals expectation minus reality. So there's one, there's one constant within that, and that's reality. So reality, unless we can control it, will not change. So what's going to happen is going to happen. So a great example is holding a door open for someone. So a frustration of somebody not saying thank you, which I'm sure we've all felt at some point, because it's just an expected thing that you'd say thank you. Um, although quite funny when it can happen and some of the responses you get from people is great. But that, that reality is always going to be that reality. So if you expect someone to say thank you, then you're going to have a greater amount of frustration from that almost transaction, from that action, from that um, communication. Yeah. If you then expect somebody not to say thank you, mm -hmm. then actually, and it's not easy to do because in a certain way and the way that we're brought up and the way that things happen around us and expectations from generations before, this is almost ingrained in us. So it's almost changing that habit. Yeah. But if we suddenly don't expect that person and that person does say thank you, well, Hey, this can be a positive transaction. This, this can be something that can just, you know, add to the positivity of the day. And that sounds, you know, if you listen to this and, and that sounds really simple and almost too good to be true, just try it. Yeah. Right, it's something that so another one for me, and the one this is the one that I've been struggling with, is no matter what, no matter what time I set my alarm for in the morning, my dog will wake me up three quarters of an hour before for his breakfast. So no matter what time I set my alarm for, so I always get frustrated, or I always wake up and go, okay. But just the other day, I thought, well, he's always going to do it. He's proven for the last six months he's going to do it daily. So actually, on the days, on the rare occasion that he doesn't, I'm going to enjoy it. But so this day, I went down and I and I fed him and I came back up to bed and I just laughed, like you say, humour. I went downstairs and I went, "You again? Okay, I'm going to feed you and I'm going to go back to bed. That's what I'm going to do." And I just laughed to myself and I just gave him a stroke and I went back up to bed. And I'm not saying that every day. I'm able to do that, but practice and practice and practice will mean that hopefully, you know, the end game is for me to go, well, oh, I love having a dog. He gets me up early, but you know what? It's part of his charm. You know, why not? It's, it's not going to change. Mm. Um, the point is that you, you've identified that you've got a choice, haven't you, how you react to yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, that's, again, that's what's empowering about the world of manifestation. Well, it's about the, the world of coaching as well and self-development is mm. that, we have got we have got choices in our life. We aren't 
we aren't governed by something that's 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 out of our control like a lot of things in life we can control some things we can't control but a lot of stuff we can but yeah some things we can control and i'm a massive believer that there is a big gray area that unless you are i mean we sit we use big words like enlightened but unless you are introduced to some of these things some of these simple ways that you can apply to yourself or um, really just see something happening take it and accept it because sometimes it's just the accepting it's happening the way that we are brought up by the school system parents their ideas ideals how their parents brought them up we will you will always have ingrained in your head and it's a real struggle to see that those things can be changed because they happen all the way through until you're really independent until you hit 16 18 you've been brought up with that so either you're the rebel who always gets told off and there's another i think there's another slant on that because your parents aren't allowing you to be you if you're constantly at, at loggerheads because you're being a rebel it's just that you see things differently and there's a lot to be done with that but if you're that kind of person then this may not be as difficult this this realization may not be as difficult but if you're somebody that's had a really unfrictious unfri fr isn't even a word it's a really smooth way through childhood or a really smooth life quite nice always has its challenges but really nothing to write home about nothing to report as such i think that's where it becomes a particular challenge to go well actually I believed it. I do believe different to that, you know, because you haven't, you know, you haven't come across it. Um, yeah, I've lost my train of thought now. I told you I'd do this, didn't I, when we were talking before? <laughs> I, know you, I know what you're saying. And it actually relates to what I was saying earlier about how our brain is wired. Yeah. And you picked up a good point is that actually it's wired and conditioned by a number of things, you know, parents, friends, family, society, social media nowadays, mm -hmm. media general you know all of those things at a young from a very young age or well, from day one basically in our lives are teaching us this is how you should live your life yeah. you know? and it's very very hard when you get into adulthood especially to rewire the brain and start challenging some of the beliefs that we were that we were sort of taught by various people um, in our lives and that's the other element of my program really is what I haven't touched on is it's all well and good learning about law of attraction and manifestation and how to use mm. thought emotions of how to manifest things in our life. But quite often people get excited by that prospect, go off and start manifesting more money, bigger houses, better jobs. And then like what happened to me, take a step back and realize actually I'm still not satisfied here. There's still something missing. And that's where the soul comes in. And that's where it's really important to reconnect with the soul because the soul and our inner self is the part of us that knows what will truly, truly make us happy. Now, this is not to say that money doesn't make us happy or bigger houses doesn't make us happy. It's not to say that at all. It's what I'm saying is, is that it's really important before you start applying the law of attraction and manifestation to your life, that you take a step back, you do some deep work on yourself and figure out exactly what will make your soul come alive basically mm. again i didn't do that and that's what led me to you know to my breakdown and then yeah. it took a breakdown for me to realize that i was going after stuff that perhaps wasn't necessarily for me or was right for me um and so yeah i think it's, it's really important to get that point across and again that's partly the problem with the secret is because it doesn't really touch on that um i don't want to come across as though i'm negative towards the secret because i love the secret and it's what introduced it. it's what got me into the world of manifestation i always recommend people read it but read it and then also realize that there's loads of other stuff to think about as well yeah before. it's not it, it's not by any means a be all and end all and it does from listening to it it does it almost like you say it it tells you that if you do it, it works and that you'll never, you'll never feel failure again, or you'll never, you know, and it isn't that, but I think with a lot of, a lot of books that are in the self-development realm um, or entrepreneur or whatever, I think it's important to take what resonates with you. I don't read, I, 
I mean, my memory is not the best anyway, but I'll read some of these books and I'll take the things and certain paragraphs and certain ideas that will really hit me and I'll think about and I'll and I'll bring up and I'll talk to people about and there'll be and there'll be other things that just that just pass by, like with most books. Um, and I think it's because we've got to remember it's self development as well. So what we then read and we apply and works may not work for somebody else. Mm-hmm. So that's where we have to be careful and not try to become our own mentors and try and well not even coach other people because as a coach you wouldn't normally tell people what to do or give advice. Um, mm-hmm. It's more of a it's more of a thinking thing. But yeah, it's 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 realizing that everyone would take something different um, something different away from it. Um, Our development world. I mean, you'll you'll know, but there's. There's millions of books out there, isn't there? There's a million books, articles, programs, films, documentaries, podcasts. You know, it can become quite overwhelming. Mm. Um, it's exciting, but it can be very overwhelming as well. And you're totally right. And this is what I say to my clients on my, even my manifestation program. I say, look, I'm delivering you a lot of information here, but it's your job to feel into what resonates with you. Yeah. If you're totally right. What's worked for me won't necessarily work for other people. Um, I offer people, I try and offer people loads of information and then get them to decide which bit yeah. feels right for them. Yeah. Uh, and then once they found that, once they found something that they resonate with, run, run with that, you know, as long as it, as, for as long as it resonates with you. And then if it stops resonating with you, then dive back into the self-development world and you find something else that resonates with you. You can, you can change, you can change direction in life and you can change Mm. All about things in life you know of course and and i one of the biggest things i learned was actually to follow my gut so yeah. our gut instinct tends to be quite a reliable source of or a good indicator for us either to think about something for a little bit longer or to realize that there are certain you know to, to maybe look at right what choices have i got and what result may they bring or actually it can just be a let's set a boundary because again boundaries are quite important crucial but and actually say this doesn't something about this doesn't feel right and say okay well i just want to think about this a bit more or i'm going to change the way i'm doing it because actually what it started off with me as it started off with me doing the same things and getting the same results but not being happy with that yeah so you know and i think we do because we because our brains are so complicated and interesting but they allow us to do things autonomously so we'll learn behaviours and even though we get the same reaction each time, just like I said about going down to see my dog for the last six months, for example, I'd been frustrated every morning at going down and feeding him. Mm-hmm. When there was nothing changing, I was following the same process and the same thought pattern and getting the same results. So until you change that, um, and sometimes it can be it can be gut feeling. But actually, I just wanted to, when you said there about what, works for some doesn't work for others and you can chop and change you can dive back into self-development it also leans into when we talked about personal training when we talk about fitness um and when we talk about dieting dieting mm-hmm. or even even methods of training if you if you're a gym goer um there are lots of things that will work towards a specific goal there is not one be all and end all but it's finding the one that resonates with you and that you want to put energy into finding out more about or keep doing yeah yeah you've got you've got you've got to enjoy the process like you've got to find something that you find enjoyable and whether it's a program in the gym finding the right program for you in the gym whether it's finding the right life coach finding the right manifestation process or strategy you know you've got to you've got to enjoy it well it's finding the right job (laughs) you know when we talk about real life applications it's if um and I think you mentioned you mentioned values before, um, and with what we find is, as you well know, that if the actions are, if there's something you're doing, so if your job doesn't align to your values, you are always going to have a problem with that job, or it's never going to be as fulfilling as, for example, you could be in an office job that restricts your ability. You like to be able to socialise, but this job doesn't let you do that as much, so you've always got a little bit of... Um, was a little bit of a grievance there but then actually you could and there are several there's hundreds and thousands of people that have done this have gone for a completely different job it could have been completely something not thought of before or it could have been a lot lower paid and this is a big one as well 
But because it fits with your values and it allows you to be more you, you'll get absolutely more out of it. Totally. Like, God, if I think back to the salary that I was on in the jobs that I did yeah. before, yeah. I took a massive, massive pay cut. Yeah. Um, but I'm so much happier now in my in my job than I was in all of my previous jobs put together. So, you know, it, it's quite easy for me to sit here and say, oh, if you're not happy in your job, you know, quit it and then find another job. I know it's not that easy, but I do think that there are so many people that do make excuses mm. um, for not just changing the job, but for making big changes uh, in the life because, and again, that's part of the brain. It's the brain is stopping you from doing those things because they are scary. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I definitely believe in following following your passions and and aligning yourself with with your values you know totally. and then again that goes back to the, the, the bit that i was talking about about the soul which is mm. the soul knows who you are who you are exactly it knows your values it knows what sets your soul on fire um, and it's really important to follow your gut instinct and feel feel into that 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 part of you because yeah. the gut instinct is your soul basically sort of guiding you you know it's that part of us that Something doesn't quite feel right here. I, I can't quite put words to what it, to what it means, but something doesn't feel right. You know, those feelings are really important, and you shouldn't you shouldn't ignore them. Yeah. So, you know, it's, like you said, it's it's never easy if you're in a job that you don't particularly like, or there's just you go you're coming home each day and you you know you're not feeling great, or whatever. But without necessarily saying just quit, mm -hmm. I think. The easiest way, if you're someone that's watching that hasn't looked at your own values or you don't really know what values are, etc., one of the simplest things and I suppose tasks would be if something doesn't feel right, stop for a minute and just try and think of what about the situation doesn't feel right. What is it that doesn't feel right? Learn more about a little bit about yourself because actually sometimes in a job, for example, you could change parts of that job to fit your values yeah. you just haven't seen it because it feels like there's too many restrictions and that job is the job and the way that you're doing it now is the way that it has to be done um but it's not always the case so actually you've got a choice you've got a chance there maybe of changing what you're doing and how you're doing it to fit the job or it might be then you go well actually this is what i need from it this job isn't giving me it what yeah. is going to give me it? And it could be the same for, albeit a little bit more complicated with relationships. Again, that gut feeling. Um, but with relationships, there's a lot more around that because I think there's a lot more about expectation from friends, family. There's just everything in one. But again, if your gut's telling you something doesn't feel right, or you might feel a little bit of anxiety before something, or you're not quite sure where this negative feeling's coming from, Try and take it and just try and work through well actually what is happening and you know what could it be that's what could it be that's unsettling you, I suppose. And you know, it can just be a good opportunity to learn, even if there's no big massive change from it. You could just come out this I don't know all the time. You you come back through the other side and you go, Oh well, that was pretty simple. You know, just have you know, it just meant laughing at something that was frustrating me because actually there's nothing I can do about it right now. Or it's been and gone. Um, I think you know it's that it's that word again, awareness, isn't it? Which I think is important word, and that's what coaching brings as well as awareness of things. You know, we do go on autopilot, and it's very, very rare nowadays really to, to take a step back and take stock of how we feel about something, try and understand why we feel the way that we feel. Mm. And that's what coaching gives you. Really, it gives you that the luxury of time to to do that and to bring awareness to where we currently are and try and get some clarity in terms of where we're going to, where we want to get to. Yeah. So we, when we talked about that friend that what would, what advice would you give to your friend? Mm. Imagine being on the receiving end of that advice. Yeah. yeah. Not, not necessarily advice, but the thought process and the, the support around it, you know, the things that would come as natural to you without thinking. Mm. Mm isn't natural to then be internal. Um, but that's what coaching can bring and that's what that support mechanism can bring. 
whether it's in an official capacity or sometimes we're lucky enough to have friends that yeah. you know have that insight but not necessarily in a structured or a you know a certified you know certified way um but yeah it's um it, again just coming back to that awareness it's once you are aware so i'm what i'm hoping and what i really want is anyone that's listening to this and and just take as I did when I when I first looked at any of these books or anything, it can be quite overwhelming. There's a lot of things, a lot of big words, which is why I'm. I really like to try and bring things down to a, a level that you can see and explain, and actually can be quite simple. The red, green, you know, the lights and the opening the door and the holding it open and things, because it can be quite overwhelming. Um, and I suppose you know you'll be driven to find your own depth in what you want to look, you know, what you want to look into, what you want to learn. But if anyone that's listening or watching this takes away one thing like I did from each of the books that I've read, and that one thing at a time when, you know, I'll say a time in need, it sounds a little bit dramatic, but in a time where you're feeling a little bit negative or you're feeling a little bit unsure of where to go or a little bit unclear, things are a little bit foggy, and you can remember something that you've read from a book or something that we've talked about today, and that can help you or that can have some value for you at that time. That's as a coaches that I believe that's what we're here for. And that's what I get the most, you know, the most kind of pleasure from. It's amazing what just a few little words can do to change your life. You know, I've read, like you've just said, I've read a sentence in a book mm. and it's been all my life since I've read it. And I've changed my life as a result of one sentence from a book. You know, it's, it's really powerful, powerful stuff. I remember reading um, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. Um, it was written some amazing stuff. Now, it's not for everybody because it is very, very deep and it's very spiritual. But I remember the concept of mindlessness and the idea that the mind is a tool that we can pick up and put down. And if you can start to get to a position where you can see that so you can feel an emotion... You can almost step away from it, see it in a third person perspective, look at the situation, appreciate it, feel it, but not necessarily be part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I first managed to do that, I was like, that's just incredible. And it seems such a simple thing because we ask, what is the mind? And there's mm -hmm. courses and I've, I've done loads of research and courses and stuff on what is the mind. And, and really for everyone, there's going to be no definitive answer. Um, it's more of a conversation starter, isn't it? Um, but it's, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely glad that I read The Secret, not because it was necessarily The Secret, but it was the start of just getting interested in looking at how I can better myself to be ultimately a better person. I, one of my values is to serve people. So if I'm a better version of myself, then what I can do for others will also increase in, you know. Mm -hmm. in no, that's, that's the thing with self-development. It's kind of snowballs, doesn't it? So you're right, it, it does, you know, reading the secret opens up doorways to other concepts and other theories. And then before you know it, you've, you've conjured up this whole yeah. you know, head full of, of, of knowledge and sort of tips and advice of how you live your, you know, your best, your best life. And then because you like serving, you can then pass that on to, to your clients you know yeah. what i love about coaching is same with you i just love serving people and helping yeah people progress progress basically it's all about progression isn't it it's about it's not about being perfect it's just about progressing no yeah it's, it's one step at a time there's i can't remember who said it but if you were one percent better if you concentrate on being one percent better each day by the end of the year you'd be 365 percent better than you were on day one yeah. and that is huge. You could be three times further on by just being 1% more each day. Um, and again, when you look at that, it's huge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but, but we don't see things like that. Um, yeah. If just conscious of time, so I don't know if you've got to, to get anywhere, but I, what I wanted to ask is, and this is where I'm going to put you on the spot, if there was one piece of advice or one piece of a short message, a couple of sentences, whatever, a minute or so, that you could give to anyone as a little bit of a bite-sized chunk of Andy, this is what I've got to give and I want to give it out to the world, what would it be? 
Yeah, and the reason why it's on the spot is because as a coach, there's never just one. <laughs> so you've got to choose one. <laughs> you know what? I think it would be invest in time and money on yourself. Mm. I don't think enough of us do it. I think we we spend a lot of our time, energy and money on things that aren't serving us. Mm. Um, and the power of coaching, the power of self-development, the power of learning about manifestation is so powerful. And it only takes an hour a month or an hour a week or whatever to study yourself, to, to, to spend time understanding yourself and investing time, energy, and potentially money on yourself. Mm. Because that small amount of time and relatively small amount of money can have such massive benefits. And you know, if, if you're thinking like in business terms, the return on investment, the return on investment is absolutely massive when you spend your time, energy, and money on on yourself and your your progression um, in life. So that that would be my biggest advice. Because I, I do speak to, and I don't know if you you probably come across similar situations. Um, where people tell me that they haven't got time to be coached or they haven't got the money to be coached. Mm -hmm. And I don't buy it a lot of the time because you can you can find the time. You can quite often find the money. I understand that, you know, money's not as readily available to everyone. Mm -hmm. But when something's really important to you, and I'd like to think that your life is very important to you, then you will you will you will find the time, you will find the energy and you will find the money to to invest in in yourself. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, what message of the day? Invest in yourself. Put some importance on yourself, um, mm. and actually see the benefits that that come from that. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, Andy, and I've got an idea, I just want to introduce after this as well, very quickly. But if anyone wants to get in touch with you, how can they reach you? What's the best way? Uh, so my website is andydowns.com. Um, my Instagram handle is at coach Andy Downs. And my email is hello at andydowns.com. I like it. Very accessible. Lots of Andy Downs. <laughs> <laughs> one, thing, one thing I did want to say, because we've talked a lot about self-development books, and mm. sometimes it's where to start. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say the secret is the best place for somebody to start. So what I was thinking is, if below the video on the podcast, if I put from each of us a couple of books that we would suggest people to read or maybe look at, mm -hmm. um, yeah. talk about them afterwards um but we'll put them on i think that'd be quite useful as a way to start um, and i know i'm always happy to talk about it if somebody wants to message me if they've read one of the books or whatever or any of them um as i'm sure you are as well so <laughs> thank you very much for um allowing me some of your time today and it's been really good to catch up again yeah thank you matt thank you for inviting me no problem at all and um guys thank you for tuning in so that's from us today and um, don't forget to check out the other episodes, which are on my YouTube channel. Um, this is number 12, so there are 11 other episodes on there. All from a, a room of different people from across the cosmos as the superhero finder that I am. Okay, so see everyone later and stay super. <laughs>